When you hear the word offering, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Speak it out. Money. Anything else? Okay. That was my answer too. Money. Is this the kind of money you were thinking of? That's what I was thinking of. Offering money to the church. Offering is one of those words that maybe isn't in our everyday vocabulary. I don't know about you, but it's not a word I use very often. So we're going to unpack that word in just a few minutes. Um, to bring us all up to speed, back in February, our council president, John Springsteen, called a group of people from our midst here in the congregation to take a look at putting together a vision statement for our church. And so we met frequently over the next several months, praying, reading scripture, Through the process of consensus, it was decided that this would become the vision statement for First Christian Church. It is to be the umbrella over which all our ministries will, will fall. Everything will line up. Everything we do, everything we are, together and in the community, it will all come under this vision statement. So read it aloud with me, please. Offering hope and welcome to all through Jesus Christ. Now you might think, oh, that's kind of a simple statement. That doesn't say much. But it does. It's a very powerful statement. And may it guide us well as we continue in the weeks and months and years to come as we're discerning God's will for our church. And as I have been sitting with this these last several weeks, I thought, wouldn't this be a powerful personal vision statement? Can you imagine how this would change our lives as individuals, let alone as a church community? It would change how we live. And it can change how we live in community. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be exploring the different parts of the vision statement. And we hope that you take this seriously. You're going to see it a lot. You're going to hear it a lot. It's easy to memorize. <laughs> We want you thinking about it, praying about it, discussing it. When you get together for coffee or lunch or breakfast or out in the hallway, talk about it. What do those words mean to you? Because I think what you're going to find is what the people on that vision statement team found. Those words mean different things to different people. Today we begin a four-week series, and today we're going to look at the word offering. Not a word we use very much. We use other words that are synonyms. So let's look at our gospel reading this morning. Uh, you heard it read, maybe you read along with it in your bulletin. This story is near and dear to Christians. It's like the crux of who we are. It's about this table. It is about that last supper when, when Christ disclosed what was coming. He was trying to prepare the disciples for what was going to come. He's talking about his body broken and his blood poured out. 
We know the story, and it is near and dear to us. But let's look at it with fresh eyes and fresh ears this morning. Even though the word offering is not in there, and I looked in several different translations and I didn't see that word used specifically, but it can be inferred, I think, in two verbs specifically. The two verbs I'm referring to are gave and poured out. Listen again. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. He offered it to them. And then we read, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. My blood is offered for you. He gave them bread and a cup of covenant. He gave it freely. It was his offering, given out of love. Do you ever think of these, this story about the Last Supper, the acts that are taking place in this story? Do you think of it as an offering? I can't say I ever did. But we use this, this story from the Gospel of Luke in a Lectio Divina, Divina session. Uh, and that's where we look at scripture seeking inspiration by the Holy Spirit. And I saw it in a new way. And of course, this has been on my mind for months now. So when I heard this story, it just spoke volumes to me about offering. In Luke's gospel, Christ's broken body, the bread, is given. His blood, the wine, is poured out. This offering of course, was done as in proxy for us, taking our place. We were the ones who were condemned, not Christ. So he stepped in so that we might be reconciled with God. He offered us not only his sacrifice, he offered us this ritual, and this ritual that we practice every Sunday and worship has become so rich. It is the cornerstone of worship for disciples of Christ. It is it's the primary focus. Everything else is around it. But that's the heart of worship. And he offered these events of the Last Supper as an offering to us people he didn't even know yet. And here we are receiving that offering. And it's not just for us, we share it with others in offering. So what? Where is this taking us? Well, Think about in your own life experience to times when you have given gifts to others, when you have offered a gift to someone else, freely given. Many times it is given out of love, no strings attached. And there is no guarantee that the receiver is going to receive it in that same sense of offering and love in which it was given. We can't control how people receive the gifts we offer, can we? No, we can't. Have you ever given someone a gift out of love and you put a lot of heart and soul into picking out just the right gift 
and then give it to them and you can tell immediately by their reaction they don't want that or they're disappointed it happens I'm sure we've all gone through that or sometimes a gift of money is received with gratitude genuine gratitude and then a few days later they're coming asking for some more money <laughs> has that ever happened that's not unusual either we have no control over how someone will receive our offering look at Jesus in our reading he knew not everyone was going to welcome and receive his offering of life as a substitute for our own lives we who were condemned to death he knew not everyone was going to say oh I'll take it thank you so much he offered himself anyway. People still today, they hear the stories. They, they hear the witnesses of Christ's life-changing presence in people's lives and how he sacrificed himself. So we have the hope of eternal life, and they turn away, no thank you. It still goes on. Christ knew that would happen, and he offered himself anyway. I think Christ would say to us, in fact, he models for us in this reading from Luke this morning, offer your gift anyway. Offering ourselves to someone else is about much more than money and gift cards or a material gift. Christ is offering himself to his followers. He's even trying to offer himself to the people he is closest with, as well as us 2,000 years later. You can almost hear him saying, be vulnerable. That's what offering of oneself requires. The Gospels show us this in Jesus. He seems to say, yes, your offering may be rejected. It might be misused for some purpose other than what you intended when you gave it to them. But if it's offered out of love for our Abba Father, then it's the right thing to do. This sounds like the Jesus I have come to know. We know the rest of the story, don't we? Remember, at that last supper, sitting around the table, when Jesus is speaking these words, offering them his broken body in the bread, offering them his blood poured out in the wine, Remember, he knew Judas was seated at the table with him as he spoke those words and made that offering. He knew Peter was seated at the table and that these two would very soon, that very same night, betray him and deny even knowing him. And the others that were gathered around the table, very shortly, they would scatter. They would run away in fear. Jesus knew what was coming, and he offered himself anyway. You see, Jesus loved his Abba Father and God's children so much that he was obedient to God's will 
because this is what it was going to take to reconcile all God's children back into relationship with God. His offering, Christ's offering, was to God and to us. Our other scripture reading was from Hebrews. So let's say, let's take a quick look and see what Paul says in our Hebrews reading. Well, again, the word offering is not specifically used, but he does say, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, encouraging one another. That sounds like offering, spurring someone on, encouraging them, supporting them. That is offering them part of yourself. It's offering them hope, strength, affirmation. It is about offering. It's not about cash and gift cards, like I said. It's about support and encouragement. That's what Paul is talking about. He's, he's telling the church to, to offer support and encouragement to one another. He's trying to build up the church. But of course, when we hear it, we need to know, we need to take it outside the walls too. But yes, we need to be supportive and encouraging to one another in our church community. Absolutely. And our transformed lives should take it outside the walls then. But of course, before you can offer support and encouragement to someone, you have to listen to them. Listen to their story. Listen to what they're going through. If you're truly going to be supportive and encouraging to them, you have to know what they need and what they're going through. And giving that kind of attention and listening to people is an offering in itself. And we can all do that, even if we're just making a phone call, even if we can't get out and physically do things. We can call and check in on people and be supportive and encouraging. Offering was described in our opening song. Remember? I love that song, by the way. You played it a few weeks ago. I forget where in the service it was. Maybe, I don't know. But we didn't sing it. And when I heard you play it, I thought, oh, that's the song we have to sing on Offering Sunday. We lift our voices. We lift our hands. We lift our lives up to you. Our lives, we are an offering. All that we are, all that we have, all that we hope to be, we give to you. We are an offering. It's about loving God and neighbor so much that our very lives are an offering. It's so much bigger than money. It's our very lives. To wrap this up, if ourselves, our very lives, are our offering to God and to other people, that means it's our thoughts, our attitudes, our words, our actions. Then what are we offering? Hopefully, we offer our time, our attention, our love, our concern, our prayers, our support, our encouragement. But if we're honest, there are days 
when we are offering God and each other our complaints, our fears, our wants. So, I give you two, two questions to take home. What am I really offering God and others? And, part two, am I willing to be vulnerable in offering hope and welcome to all? We're going to remember those questions and think on them this week. Yay! Somebody is. Give it some thought. And um, I hope this vision statement is something that uh, will inspire you. Uh, I find it exciting. I, I just find it exciting. We, not that we haven't been doing this, but let's be really intentional about doing this, especially in the weeks to come as we start looking at our many different ministries and projects and programs. Where do they fall in this? So we're not quite so scattered in so many directions. Let's be intentional. This seems to be what God is calling us to do, and hopefully we'll all climb on board with this. Amen. Amen. Amen.